Tokyo is a broken city. It's broken into well, smaller cities or areas, each with their own specific goal or purpose. For example, the fish market of Toyosu or Shinjuku's nightlife or even the area of Ryogoku dedicated to rather large people fighting each other or practicing fighting each other. And so today we're doing a speed run of the entire city with one specific goal in mind, looking at where to buy everything in Tokyo. Starting with Nippori. Dubbed Fabric Town, this is where people from around Japan come for specialty shops for fabrics, textiles, and well, pretty much everything. This, this area has it all. <laughs> there is a lot in this area, and that is kind of going to be our theme today. There's even a whole Nippori Fabric Town website for the area, and that is Nippori, short and sweet. Okachimachi is an area of robberies. Seriously, the area is filled to the brim with jewelry shops and along with that comes a steady and consistent flow of heist and robbery attempts. And yes, it does happen in Japan more often than you might think. There are a large number of gem and material wholesalers in the area, so many of Japan's amazing handmade jewelry designers and artisans will come out to Okachimachi to get their supplies. Also keep in mind as we do this today, and this applies to all areas, these shops aren't all just perfectly lined up beside each other, they're spread throughout the area and require a bit of searching, but that that is where the fun comes in. Next area. Avoid shopping the Nakamise Street in Tokyo's traditional area of Asakusa. It's that densely packed row of front-facing shops leading from Kaminarimon Gate all the way down to the Sensoji Temple itself. It's a tourist trap and it's filled with 90% of stuff that isn't even close to being Japanese. Like these fake silk kimono-esque things here. This, this is not a kimono. There are a few good food and drink options, but that kind of feels like another video. What Asakusa is good for is two to three things mainly. Number one is kimono. Both new and used, the area is filled with shops. My personal favorite is Ogawa. I've bought all of my kimono there. Oh, and number two is festival clothes or supplies for Japanese festivals. Also be careful with Asakusa, any area of Tokyo, really. Things just will close randomly. There's no set close day, so make sure the shop that you want to go to is actually open before you go. It's old, but I'll link an entire guide to the Asakusa area up here. Just down the road and wild is Kapabashi Dori, a street known for everything kitchenware. There are entire shops just for fake display foods, and you can get everything from kitchenware to traditional Japanese plates to supplies to set up and run your own restaurant. And this giant chef's head, so that's the thing. And since an impressive number of people want to buy Japanese kitchen knives, Kapabashi Hondori, which is just off of Kapabashi Dori, is lined with some of Japan's best knife shops. This shop is actually no photographs, but I know the owners here, so they let us get some shots. Straight across the city is Shibuya, which probably needs no introduction and is known for a lot of stuff. Some good and some maybe not so much. It's meant to be kind of a youth fashion area with shops like Ichimariku geared towards the female crowd and Magnet geared towards more of the male crowd among many, many, many others. And there's a Pokemon Center. And just down the street is Harajuku, which is also known for fashion, but like more? From Takeshita Street and beyond, Harajuku is filled with clothing shops and accessory shops, most of which are geared towards young girls. Also in Takeshita Dori is one of the biggest and best Daiso 100 yen shops that you will find in central Tokyo. This one's a really good place to get souvenirs. And crepes, they, they have crepes. And in stark contrast, we have Jimbocho, an entire area of the city dedicated to books and bookstores but it's a deceptive area because on weekdays, well, like this, it's just a quiet book town. On weekends, it's filled with more youth than the areas of Harajuku and Shibuya. Some of these shops are amazing too. Also, a lot of these buildings have multiple floors of bookshops, so don't just stick to the ground level. 
But the beauty of Jimbocho, aside from the books, is its proximity to two or three other really amazing areas like Ochanomizu or Music Town, which is a haven for musicians and instrument lovers with the single greatest collection of music shops in the entire city of Tokyo. There are more than 50 instrument shops spread throughout the area and even an entire street just called Guitar Street. Not only is it a whole town of instruments, but it's also directly connected to Ogawamachi, which most people have never even heard of, but is packed to the gills with snowboard and ski related shops, as well as other sporting goods stores, both on the main street and tucked into the back streets. I also just noticed that the guardrails here are sports themed. Guardrails themselves are also different in almost every area of Tokyo, but that feels like a different video. And it's just a short walk down the road to Akihabara, which just looks the best at night. It's one of the top places on this entire list. And that's saying a lot because we still have most of the best places left. Now this area is the obvious choice for Japanese anime, gaming, and retro gaming, figures, Pokemon cards, or really any kind of cards. Heck, you can even find entire shops just dedicated to used records. Not to mention the number of airsoft options. To give you a sense of just how dense and exciting Akiba is, let's do a speed run of some of my favorite chomps while we give some love to our sponsor, NordVPN. You've probably heard of NordVPN, you might even be using them, but if you're new to VPNs and what they can do, the simplest explanation is that they can make your computer or device look like it's accessing the internet from another country or location, which can be really helpful in unlocking streaming content that might not be available in your country. But I use NordVPN for two main things. Number one is anytime I'm attached to public Wi-Fi, like out here in Tokyo, because without the encryption of a VPN, I really want to go in here. <laughs> Using public Wi-Fi is essentially like being in the wild, wild west. And number two is anytime I am doing planning for travel searching for flights and hotels is using a VPN to make it look like you are searching from within the country you're hoping to travel to has the potential to yield cheaper results now I keep NordVPN on all of my devices and if you want to give it a shot you can use my link in the description box below along with the code Tokyo lens to give yourself a two-year plan at a huge discount as well as four extra months for free the best part is, is that NordVPN has a 30 day money back guarantee, which means you can try it out essentially risk free. That is the end of our sponsor role and I always, always end up in thrift stores. Ginza has what might be Tokyo's largest collection of luxury brand shops and, and a Muji hotel. Didn't even know that was a thing. In pretty much every category from pearls and watches to jewelry, cosmetics, clothing. There's also a ton of stuff here that I don't even think I've ever heard of. Basically, if it's expensive, you'll probably be able to find it in Ginza. And fun fact, the area is also home to some of Tokyo's best hidden back streets and secret shrine and that. So, oh, and rooftop shrines too, like, Really, really nice ones. Omote Sando is the high-end fashion boutique area of the city, along with the nearby area of Aoyama. The main street is lined with all the big fashion brands with fancy shop fronts. And there's an entire shopping mall in here that just might be the emptiest shopping mall in Tokyo, while magically being somehow so much bigger from the inside than it is from the outside. Nihonbashi can be summed up with its collection of golf related shops and old department stores. But this area is really cool for another reason. Now, despite it being a very heavily business focused area within walking distance of Tokyo Station, the area of Nihonbashi and the surrounding area are filled with residential apartments like this one, and it wasn't on purpose. The original location of the Tokyo Stock Exchange is in Kabutocho, which is right around the corner from Nihonbashi. But when the market made the shift to digital, all those offices that were used to move and transport physical stocks and bonds suddenly emptied out at such a high speed that apartments started popping up right, left, and center. And I learned that because I used to live in this area. 
Next spot. Shimokitazawa is home to a very common mistake made by visitors. Known as the subculture capital of Japan, it's home to a wide variety of music options and bars, and is filled with vintage clothing shops and consignment stores that many people mistake for thrift shops, but are actually much more expensive. This shop here is a pretty good example of one of those vintage or consignment stores. If you're having trouble telling them apart, usually you can do so by the prices. Now there are plenty of actual thrift stores in the area with reasonable prices. You just might need to look a little harder for them. I recommend just walking around and enjoying the area. Like honestly, I'm pretty sure the area is filled with more used clothing stores than you could hit in a single day. With many of them having a different theme, sometimes very specific, like this one behind me here is a thrift store slash coffee shop. I like it. Now the area of Meguro is like Shimokitazawa, but for furniture. If you're looking for something a little more unique than Ikea and potentially a little more expensive, the main street of Meguro has the greatest collection of furniture and used furniture shops in all of Tokyo. You know what, scratch what I said about more expensive. The prices in this particular one aren't bad. Like, these are less than $200. And this retro leather chair here is around the same price. I'm pretty sure that IKEA has more expensive chairs that aren't that nice. Okay, Meguro's not bad. Ueno is the super area. It has everything. It's an amazing place to get souvenirs, but the first thing that actually comes to mind here for some reason is shoes. There are countless shoe stores in the area and in the Ameyoko market, which was originally the largest black market in Japan after World War II and is now home to literally everything that you can imagine. Also, an odd abundance of toy and hobby shops are spread through the market, and it's the perfect place to grab snacks to take back home with you, with there being entire supermarket-style shops like Niki no Kashi here, which specializes in snacks and food, and it, it, it's a paradise. It's also another great area for street food. And it's all right around the corner from big old Ueno Park, so juxtaposition. I once heard the Nakano Broadway described as an eclectic cornucopia of retro and collector's goods. I love that description by the way and still feel it's very accurate. The Nakano Broadway actually shares a lot of similarities with the area of Akihabara in its dedication to collector's items, retro goods, thrift, anime, and basically all things wonderful. The whole thing is a visual treat and one of the best parts is, is it's contained within this multi floor shopping arcade, keeping it all close together and out of the rain. I never noticed this before, but there are also a lot of watch shops, most which are almost completely empty. There's also this really wild looking cafe. I love the TV they have on the wall. I may have done a little bit too much shopping here. Kurumai is a craft town from every angle you look at it. It is the go-to spot in Tokyo for craft supplies, handmade bags, accessories, or even trying your hand at traditional Japanese crafts. While Shin Okubo, or Little Korea, is where you are going to find everything from Korean cosmetics and fashion, all the way to food, K-pop, and more. But Tokyo Station, or more accurately the space below it, is a real life cheat code. It is a hack. This shop behind me, for example, among others, sells souvenirs from every single region in Japan. In fact, their website even says, it's for those times you forgot to get a souvenir for your friends from that place you went. You can literally travel Japan without ever having to leave Tokyo Station. This shop focuses entirely on foods from Hokkaido. In fact, this vast underground shopping arcade attached to the station is obviously also filled with Tokyo-only souvenirs. For example, the ever-popular Tokyo banana. And there's more, a lot more. This doesn't even touch on food. You, actually, I might have to redo this entire video just, just for food. What was your favorite area?